Alright, this will be the second method in solving systems of uh, equations. So it's called the substitution method. So here's our system, and uh, literally you get this name because we are literally going to substitute. Right? So from this first equation we see that x and y minus 4, they're the same thing, right? x equals y minus 4. All right, so what that means is we, we can literally, because the x values and y values are supposed to be this, have the same values, so that literally means we can take the y minus 4 and substitute it into the second equation for x. So it would look like y minus 4, that's all the x part, plus 2y equals 5. We literally took this and substituted in for that x. All right, so how does that benefit us? Well, now we have one equation with just one letter, and that's easy to solve for that letter, right? You get 3y equals 9, so y equals 3. But now here's the most common error. Remember, the solution to a system of linear equations here is going to be an ordered pair. You have found half of that ordered pair. And the most common error is to go, woohoo, great, I got y equals 3, and not go back and figure out what the x value needs to be. Right, so now find x. Try to fight the temptation of saying, yay, I'm done. Right, so to find x, well, go back to one of your two equations here, and we know what the y value is supposed to be. So I'm going to take this 3 and plug it in for this y right here, into equation 1. So x equals 3 minus 4. So x equals negative 1. It does not matter which equation you plug the 3 back into, the first one or the second one. All right, what matters is that you remember to go and do that to figure out what the x value is. And so the solution is negative 1, 3. All right. All right, so now let's move on to this one. All right, so the idea on the substitution method is we want to isolate a variable. Now, on that first equation, we had x already isolated, and so we just took the y minus 4 and substituted in to the um, other equation for x. All right. Well, this time, we need to actually isolate a variable. Now, it does not matter which variable you isolate or from which equation. All right, so like we could take this first equation, and we could go off to the side, get x by itself, or, or we could get y by itself. Either one, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then substitute into the other equation. Uh, and that would, that would be fine. Or we could say, you know, it's easier to isolate y down here on the second equation. Now, that's pretty easy to do. You could go over to the side and say, right, y equals negative 2x minus 1. Right? So I encourage you to make it easy on yourself. Uh, you know, find, uh, if it's possible, find a variable that's easy to isolate uh, and isolate that one. And then our goal is to take this 2x minus 1 and substitute, substitute it in for y up here into the other equation. And make sure you substitute into the other equation. Don't substitute into the equation that you were just um, messing with. All right, so here we go. What does that leave us with? 4x minus 5 times negative 2x minus 1 equals negative 23. And now we have one equation with one variable in it, x, and it's easy to solve for x. So you get 4x plus 10x plus 5 is equal to negative 23. So 14x equals negative 28, so x equals negative 2. And again, you're going to be tempted to go, woohoo, I'm done! All right? But remember, we need to go back and find the other half the ordered pair. All right? So now find y. Right, so it does not matter which equation you go back and substitute x into. You can go back to the first one, the second one, or even this one over here where you isolate a y. Because let's be honest, if you messed up here in isolating y, then the rest of it is wrong anyway. All right? So I'm going to go right here and plug in the negative 2. So y equals negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1. And so y equals 4 minus 1, so y equals 3. So the solution to this system is the ordered pair negative 2, comma, 3. Follow me? All right, so now what that means is if we were to graph both of these equations, 4x minus 5y equals negative 23 and 2x plus y equals negative 1, then they would intersect at the point negative 2, comma, 3. 
right? So remember the first method we talked about was solving systems by graphing, and you graphed each equation and you found out where they intersected. So now the problem with that is that uh, sometimes they might not fall on negative two, three, right? They could fall at one half and seven eighths being the answer, and uh, that's going to be harder to see on a graph. But the um, substitution method here uh, gives us an algebraic way to find the exact solution to that system. All right. Okay, so let's try another one. 3x plus 6y equals negative 15, and x equals negative 2y minus 5. All right, since x is already isolated here in the second equation, let's take the 2y minus 5 and substitute it into x into the first equation. All right, so that would give us 3 times negative 2y minus 5 plus 6y equals negative 15. All right, so then go, you get negative 6y minus 15 plus 6y equals negative 15. And what happens? All right, 6y's go away, you add 15 both sides, you get 0 equals 0. All right, so here's what I want to make a note of. All right, when your variables disappear, you're left with a statement. This statement down here, 0 equals 0. This statement is either true or it is false. In this case, it is true. So when your letters disappear, you're trying to decide, is the statement you're left with without letters there, is that a true statement or a false statement? If it's a true statement, that means that these two equations up here, when graphed, would give you the same line. One would fall on top of the other one, which means how many solutions would we have? We would have an infinite number of solutions. So we could say infinite solutions. And we would also refer to this as a dependent system. All right. So when you use the substitution method and you do your substitution and you go down into your math and all the, the variables disappear, and then you're left with a true statement. That means that you have a dependent system. There's an infinite number of solutions. And if you were to graph them, that means the graphs of these two equations here would be the same line. One would fall on top of the other one. Okay, so its counterpart, all right, say take this one, if, uh, let's isolate x down here. So x equals negative 2y plus 4. All right, so substitute 2y plus 4 in for x into the first equation. You would have 4 times negative 2y plus 4 plus 8y equals 15. So that would give you negative 8y plus 16 plus 8y equals 15, and you'd be left with 16 equals 15. Okay, so now if the letters go away, you're left with a statement. This statement is either true or false. In this case, it is false. And so what do you think that means about the solutions to this system of equations? That's right, there are no solutions. If you were to graph both the first equation and the second equation, they would be parallel and they would not intersect. So there would be no solution. Systems that have no solution are called inconsistent systems. All right, so not a bad algebraic method. Uh, it's better than the graphing method because you can actually get, if your answers are 1 fourth and 7 eighths, you can actually get those numbers will pop out when you do the algebraic way. And the only thing to make note of is, is if your letters disappear, then decide if your, if your statement is either true or false. And if it's true, then you have an infinite number of solutions. And if it's false, then you have no solution. All right? All right, so that's it for solving systems of equations with the substitution method. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.